regardless of how big and brave you are. If anything's gonna put some hairs on your chest, you'll be getting trapped inside a horror movie. Ever since the dawn of the genre, we have watched the gentle and mild transform into the mental and wild. So here's to those that pulled their evil slaying pants on and went zero to hero in the name of horror. I am the woman that will do it for a Scooby snack, Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 horror movies that turned wimps into total badasses. 10. Gizmo Gremlins 2 The New Batch he might not be human, but he certainly earns his stripes, or spots really, throughout the second Gremlins movie, as Gizmo transforms from lovable mogwai into murderous, vengeance-stealing furball. Taken to be experimented on by scientists after the death of his owner, poor little Gizmo gets hit with an errant drinking fountain that spawns more new mogwai, who then eat in their building's food court and become the titular gremlin menace that only gets more unruly as the movie goes on. With more and more gremlins emerging, Gizmo ends up locked away, is routinely and maliciously tortured, and just downright trodden all over by his horrible gremlin peers. And eventually, he has taken all the sh** he can handle. Gizmo grows some furry little nadgers and kills the mohawk gremlin with a flaming bottle of whiteout that he shoots with a homemade bow and arrow. If there's any justice in this world, it is on the end of Gizmo's makeshift archery. 9. John Goo The Wailing John Goo is established as a cowardly man from the outset of The Wailing. A police officer with little crime to contend with in his small rural village, it's not until a stranger arrives and brings a mysterious illness with him that John Goo has to step up. Entrusted with figuring out what's going on before the disease spreads and transforms his town into murderers. Initially, John Goo is terrified at the slightest suggestion of anything untoward, encapsulated in one scene where a figure appears at the police station and scares him silly, and his continued fear of the innocuous Moo Myonk. But his unease and reluctance to face this supernatural stranglehold on life as he knows it is completely changed by the end of the film. Desperate to keep his daughter safe and at his wit's end with the terrible fate that has befallen his village, John Goo becomes a dog-killing, house-trashing, firm-willed pillar of a man that makes his own decisions decisions and doesn't cower from the weird supernatural beings cropping up and ruining his life. His journey isn't a pleasant one and he's not a pleasant person, granted, but it proves the lengths John Goo will go to protect his family and a strength of will that it didn't look he'd ever find otherwise. 8. Sarah Bailey the Craft Whilst Wimp feels quite harsh to be dishing out on a lot of these characters, Sarah is definitely soft-spoken, reclusive, and struggling to connect at the beginning of the movie, only opening up when she meets a gang of girls that are embroiled with witchcraft. Together, Sarah and her three newfound pals unlock powers unlike anything they thought possible previously, and subsequently fall into a dark spiral when forces outside of their control begin to take effect. That's what happens when you start messing with magic though, hey? And whilst at the end of the movie, Movie, the rest of her coven falls into obscurity, it soon becomes clear that Sarah was the one channeling this power all along. The overwhelmingly strong force of nature that brought the other girls' powers to the forefront. Without her, they are nothing. Sarah learns this by the end of the movie after suffering through all sorts of torment at the hands of her ex-friends, growing stronger with each attack on her psyche and funneling it all back into her own newfound surety. And in contrast, they are left shunned by their god Manon in the process. Justice is sweet. 7. Anita Needy Lesnicki Jennifer's Body With a name like Needy, it is pretty much spelled out that you're not doing so well on the badass scale. Someone with their priorities in check would be called something cool and edgy like Ripper or Stabby or Vigilante or the likes, but poor old Needy is stuck with a nickname that very clearly belies her clingy nature. Amanda Seyfried's character is exactly what she says on the tin for the most part, worrying and fussing over a popular cheerleader pal whilst remaining a shy and self-conscious staple in the background. As the film goes on, and Jennifer takes a hold of her succubus power, however, Needy is forced to step up and take control, eventually brawling with Jennifer before stabbing her in the heart with a box cutter and taking on her supernatural abilities in the process. Needy then breaks out of a psychiatric institution and goes on to wreak havoc on the head band that caused this whole mess in the first place. Everyone needs a friend like Needy. Maybe without being stabbed and all that, but still. 6. Ash Williams 
Evil Dead 2. Yes, you have heard this 100 times before, but god damn it does Ash not deserve his place on this list. Whilst he has long been known as king of the badasses in the horror world, that wasn't always the case. In fact, in the original The Evil Dead movie, Ash really isn't up to all that compared to his later appearances. He's rightfully terrified by a tricksy demon sending a load of deadites in to ruin the cabin getaway he had planned with his friends. Demons, eh? They've got no manners. But in Evil Dead 2, Ash is leveled up beyond recognition. Whilst he gets battered around in the first instance of the movie, he ends it cutting off his own arm and jamming a chainsaw into it, which really is the epitome of this whole thing. 5. Columbus Zombieland Columbus was literally designed for this sort of zero-to-hero trope, so it would be remiss to not include him on this list. Categorically a big nerdy wimp that turns good in the final showdown, he proves himself a worthy adversary when he decides to break his own rules, scribbling out don't be a hero to suit his zombie-mashing needs as he then saves the day. Throughout the movie, he is reinforced as a creature of habit and strict adherence to his own self-created rulebook, needing structure and support to keep himself sane in the aftermath of the apocalypse. For the most part, he's an annoying, self-righteous, self-serving asshole in the way that only Jesse Eisenberg knows how to be, gluing himself to Tallahassee's side and getting thoroughly bested by the infinitely more street-smart Wichita and Little Rock. When it comes to finally standing up for both himself and those he cares about, however, Columbus absolutely nuts up and gets the job done, evolving from whiny geek into zombie-slaying hero in the blink of an eye, and the swing of a mallet. That he faces his own worst fear, which are creepy f clowns in the process, just makes it that much better. 4. Grace and Alex Lodomus – Ready or Not it would be easy enough to say that Final Girl Grace has the wimp to badass transition in Ready or Not, really. Unaware of what she's married into, Grace is hunted through her in-law's family home until dawn, with her outfit reflecting her mental state in a slow deterioration from beautiful white gown to blood-soaked, weapon-laden harbinger of death by the end. However, Grace only had one real moment of wimpiness before taking everything in a stride. Her husband Alex, though, tells an entirely different story. How he becomes a badass is a little off-kilter with the rest of this list, but his commitment to becoming a full member of the Lodomus Hunt in the wake of learning Grace will leave him when the night is over is a pretty fun one to watch. He goes from a useless man tied to a bed for the night to restraining and stabbing his new wife in a ceremonial cult sacrifice, which is quite the level up from what we thought of his reluctant family shame at the beginning. That he is then swiftly murdered is only fair. But still, at least he commits to being a complete piece of trash by the end. 3. Christine Brown – Drag Me to Hell Christine is proof that growing strong and independent doesn't mean you can stop paying attention, as her stupid mistake at the end of Drag Me to Hell condemns her to an eternity in the underworld for the sake of not checking what cursed item she was shoving in an old woman's corpse. But all that context is complaining aside, Christine's level up into grave diving heroine is wonderful to watch. Up until that whole eternity in the underworld thing I mentioned, at the very least. Christine is established from the outset as someone that isn't very confrontational, having to prove herself at work by showing she can make tough decisions. Doing so gets her cursed by an angry old woman, of course, and Christine's dealings with her boyfriend's judgmental parents, her own past as the swine queen that she tries to bury, and mild demeanor in all aspects of her life are challenged as she has to step up to save her soul. She does exactly that in remarkably dramatic fashion, and even if it's not enough to protect her in the end, she still grows exponentially in the three days that we see her on film. 2. Tuffy slash Heroine 2 Feast If there was any more literal transformation from wimp to badass, it is from watching Tuffy's turn in Feast, where her new role is quite literally signposted across the screen. Introduced with a short bio that denotes her as a career waitress and single mom, Tuffy's defining traits relate back to her child. That is unfortunate, since it doesn't take long for him to get eaten by monstrous entities with an appetite for human flesh. Never quinoa, is it? Feast sees these creatures turn up and attempt to break into a bar where Tuffy and a ragtag group of individuals are forced to hide out in, with Tuffy incapacitated by grief after the death of her son. But then she turns that sadness into rage. And oh boy, does she have a lot of rage. Now denoted as Heroine 2 in a tongue-in-cheek revelation, she bands her group together and fights back against the monsters, brutally killing one by smashing all its teeth out and choking it to death with her arm down its throat before hacking her way to the end of the movie and making it out alive. Good. 1. Private William Hudson 
aliens. For a colonial marine, Hudson isn't half a little bitch for the majority of aliens. He spends most of the time winding his companions up in as annoying a capacity as possible, relishing his upcoming date for honourable discharge by continually shunning the mission they've all been sent on and picking at his teammates, swinging between unfounded boasting and argument starting with wild ignorance for Ripley's warnings. Then, when shit hits the fan, he proves himself to be a world away from the badass he labels himself early on, suffering from a nervous break down and unable to pull himself together until Ripley takes charge and puts him in his place. He continually whines about how everyone is going to die, and doesn't seem to see a way anyone can survive despite his gung-ho attitude as the film opens. But for all this shaming of his character, Hudson picks up all his pieces and puts them together far stronger than they ever were before, standing as an almost single-handed blockade between the mass of xenomorphs and his squad before being rewarded with a chestburster for his efforts. He proved his words true in the end, after all, since he really does make a badass turn when things get hot. End of the line, man.